What's up, Blazies? It's Casey Ariel, founder of Blaze Group and your host of Blaze Group Radio. I will be talking about the intersections of Black womanhood, entrepreneurship, news on the culture, and healing as we climb. I launched Blaze Group after spending a decade in corporate America structuring multi-billion dollar loans for large tech firms, but never once working on a deal team with another Black woman. I left to take world-class knowledge to the streets. Blaze means building leaders and accepting zero excuses, and we go beyond the bare minimum. More than solutions, we create lifelines that help Black women become as limitless as they feel. Snuggle up to this episode. May it feel as safe and nourishing as Big Mama's house did. What's up, Blazies? It is November the 1st. And I am Casey Ario, founder of Blaze Group, and I am so excited to be coming at you with another episode of Blaze Group Radio. Um, I will be coming to you more frequently, right, on a day-to-day basis, um, on a week-to-week basis, to truly hold your hand and affirm you on this journey. You are loved, sis. You are capable. A vision was placed inside of you because you are here (laughs) to fulfill that thing. And and whatever you speak is already real. Whatever you envision is already real. And as soon as you put your hand to the plow, that thing is already birthed. So keep going. Don't be deterred as people come and go because they will. Right? But forward is the objective. Forward is the objective. Um, as, As entrepreneurs, we are moths to a flame. Right. Sometimes we don't know why certain things fuel us the way they do. They, they make us happy. They give us stamina. They give us joy and, and, and don't do the same for others. Um, but that is no different than the bee. That is no different than the maggot that does what it is supposed to do on this earth. We are called to things that we are intended to do, bringing beautiful harmony and balance in this world, bringing liberation, bringing justice and peace, bringing love bring healing, bringing equality, bring equity, right? Um, so forward is the objective. A few things have happened um, in the news lately that are incredible. Um, big ups to Issa Rae for releasing her uh, wine brand uh via ray it is so dope to see her continuing to to stretch and expand in entrepreneurship especially in the way that she uh reaches horizontally right like she she said very vocally like i wasn't trying to knock on oprah's door or tyler perry's like i reached across the aisle to the homies <laughs> and we built um and it's just beautiful to see her continue to take up space and do the things that she loves right um be and be Success, successful in it, not because it works the first time or the 13th time, right? But because it truly is anchored in who she is, right? Um, big ups to Sha- Sha- Shakiri Richardson, who just had a, a hometown stadium in Texas named after her. Um, Shakiri has been herself and has received a whole lot of pushback and, and ugliness online um, for being that. But she has created so much space for us to be and to be seen, and to be loved, and to be heard, and to be respected when we don't conform and assimilate and step into respectability politics. So big ups to her for being persistent and literally changing the minds and the hearts of people who just could not see right her power for what it, what it is um, and what it was even then. Um, there's some news about a black man in upstate New York who just bought a 20 acre farm. <laughs> I love this, y'all. A 20 acre farm um, because that was his dream, right? And and that story, that story, y'all check that out. If you don't know, um, Blaze recently um, 
on our homepage, blazegroup.io. We offer around the clock news on the culture, right? Um, so that it can be at your fingertips, right? So anytime, drop by blazegroup.io, um, our homepage, you scroll down, you'll see a feed that's just updated all day long on news on the culture, just so you stay tapped in and posting, right? Because sometimes it can feel like you're by yourself, you're the only one dreaming these things, but you're not, right? Um, and we just put that access at your fingertips, but um, I love that because as we return to ourselves, right, as we wake up and realize that the goalposts have to change if we are to be whole, right? Capitalism can't give you peace of mind, right? Hoarding resources can't heal your body, right? But we're coming back inside of, in, into ourselves um, and remembering you know, agriculture, remembering the perfect balance that already exists in nature, right? That are, that are already making sure that these side effects, these nasty side effects that come from folks stripping things down to its simplest form without the balance of nature, harming us, right? Um, or, or being harmful because it doesn't have the, ba- the balance of nature. We're realizing that we already have what we need under the ground. We are made of what the ground is made of. We are made of what the stars is made of. We're made of what raindrops are made of. And um, I'm just so happy to see black folk redefining the goalposts, right? And and stepping into entrepreneurial freedom so that they can attain their wildest dreams in this lifetime, right? So um, big ups to all of that and, and, and I, I do have a, a heavy heart as I witness, um, as we all do, right? Witness what's happening um, in Palestine, right? In Gaza, um, to the Palestinian people, right? And, and, and it's very important that we use the right language around this when we talk about it, right? Um, colonization is what was done to the Palestinians, where Britain promised some land that wasn't theirs, right? To some folk who went and colonized, <laughs> colonized a region that wasn't theirs, right? And pushed out indigenous people, right? Displaced indigenous people. We've seen this playbook over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? And then have been trying to rule these people. That is apartheid. We have seen apartheid before, right? And now there's a genocide. Thousands of children are killed, have been killed. More than 50 families, the lineages, the entire, the great grandmother, grandmother, parents and children have been completely wiped out. Complete lineages. Right, this is genocide. Like as we talk about this story and we think about, you know, people being angry about being oppressed and colonized and killed, right? And displaced. Right. It is important that we use language that truly de- describes it as it is, right? And, and understand that anybody, anybody would resist such offenses um and so i'm definitely you know sharing what i can with my community um there's an app called five calls that makes it very easy to call your legislators um, government officials to um push for a ceasefire right um but folk deserve, folk, the indigenous folk deserve to live on their land and be free, period. <laughs> um, and that and that brings me to the the origin story to a blaze um, that I'll that I'll share really quickly. Um, these episodes will be frequent but short, right? Um, because rightfully so, um, I think most of us are. Aligning ourselves to people, brands, places, things, communities, etc., that truly do align with our values, right? With our our humanity, um, and 
I don't know that a lot of people know the origin story of Blaze, um, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll give a little bit of background, and of course, we'll be chopping it up pretty frequently. Um, but Blaze was born in 2020 um, during a, a lot of the not just civil unrest that was happening around, you know, racism, um, marching, protests, etc. As we were pissed, angry. Um, fed up after many of the murders of our people, right? Black bodies being slain and tortured and and just dehumanized over and over again in media cycles. Um, inside of myself, I had an awakening, right? I was structuring multi-billion dollar loans for large tech corporates in San Francisco. I lived in Oakland, California. Um, and for the for the first time in my life, it wasn't my first time marching, right? It wasn't my first time protesting because I'd done that. I'd done that um, in San Francisco um, for the Women's March, right? In, in, in March of every year. Um, and in doing that, I was very I was very aware of the fact that feminism, in the way that most see it and push for it, right, is centered on whiteness, right, as I marched, I knew that they didn't see me, (laughs) right, I knew that, you know, the strides made and the gains talked about weren't about black women, right, we were seeing white women being elevated to boards, right, we were seeing white women being elevated to the positions of CEO, right, and that was enough, for a lot of people, but yet I marched, right? Because I actually did care and do care, right? About humanity, equity, parity for all folk, right? The same thing was happening inside of my big company, right? 220,000 employees around the world. um, And I would do diversity and inclusion initiatives, right? I would would speak, you know, at, at, at events, et cetera, talking about, you know, parity for women. And I knew then, Right. Them folk didn't see me for real. They they literally felt like, you know, these promotions for women that did not look like me and them hiring women that, that, that did not look like me and then promoting women that did not look like me was progress. Right. And when I would bring these things up in these rooms, there was this shock. Like when I would say, like, have you ever hired a black woman? <gasps> wow, I never Oh, okay. Have you ever promoted one? What? Wow, I never thought about. You know, um, but something was different about the march. The 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 not the, the march. The protest that I was doing in Oakland every night. You know, I was shoulder to shoulder with one some of the most brilliant and radical and deserving people on this earth. People who had been mobilizing communities for decades. You know, it was in their blood and their lineage. People who were innovative people who were, were making something out of nothing and, and, and then more out of something, right? And so I quit. I quit corporate to put abundance and access and ease at the fingertips of my community because the insights, the knowledge, the cash that was slushing around every single day in those ivory towers that I was working in was not making it to my community, right? And so I wanted to be a conduit, right? A way to to decolonize pathways to business success, right? And so Blaze was born. Blaze means building leaders and accepting zero excuses. Zero excuses because I believe we're going to see this in our lifetime. We will. We already are. Blaze is already... Um, un, like broken so many chains, right? As it relates to the way that access is divvied up, the way that we can democratize, you know, who gets to the front of the line for a lot of cutting edge technology and resources, et cetera, right? And so I left, um, I went to Dubai for a month and my soul, I was, my soul was tired. My soul was so tired and I slept for three out of the four weeks. And I let myself do that. Working a decade in corporate America. <clears throat> and I was a machine. <laughs> like, not for real. Obviously, I was doing damage to my body, right? But but giving me the unplug. I slept for three weeks, y'all. Um, and I started 
dreaming and building, right? And, and I went to Dubai for a month because I wanted to show myself. I want to put skin in the game to show myself that I was as limitless as I felt. And things were birthed, right? Um, and then in December, I went to Zanzibar for, for three weeks. All these are solo trips, right? Um, continuing to continuing to put pen to paper to shape things. Uh, I shaped the, the Blaze Business Intensive in the month of December. Um, I started it in November while I was in Dubai. Um, at that time, it was called Business Management for Black Women until I met a brother who came along and taught me about branding, right? And told me, Casey, don't start making chicken. Nah, nah, don't start making chicken. <laughs> You, in a vending machine, do you buy the do you buy the candy bar that's in the Hershey wrapper or do you buy the one that's in the Ziploc bag? I'm like, the Hershey wrapper. He's like, but they the same thing. Wait, the Hershey wrapper. He's like, that's branding, right? And so he he was the one who changed my 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 business management for black women. Shout out to everyone in that first cohort who who bought my first product. That product is still it is still a, a key product that's selling and, and helping so many black women entrepreneurs um, across the globe. Shout out to y'all. They've gone on to go to pitch competitions and won. <laughs> They've gone on to generating um, six figures. They've gone on to doing five-figure launches, all of these things, right? Um, but yeah, created that. I actually met my now hubby. Um, that month while in Zanzibar and shoot, less than 60 days later, I moved to the continent, right? I moved to the continent um, at the top of 2021 and continued to build, right? Just continued to build this internet home for black women entrepreneurs and uh, beautiful things occurred, man. Like we, um, we grew our community, our, our knowledge community base, right, for our Blaze Launch Academy, because after the Blaze was intensive, there were more courses and toolkits, workbooks, you know, master classes, et cetera, um, exceeded 7,500 students, right, in that, in that um, institute, if you will. Uh, we launched an app. Uh, initially, the app was called Table and Tribe for, for Black women building their tables, you know, uh, connecting with tribe. I was wildly successful, um, became became um, cash flow positive on that product um, in about six months, I think, right, where we exceeded the expenses that, that went into, you know, running and maintaining it. Um, and so I made a decision to double click on that. I made a decision to double click on that, right, and, and make that the the core, right, the central home. And so we've migrated the, the, the Blaze Launch Academy over to the app as we continue to um, leverage that to put access at the fingertips of folk because you know on the continent right most folk don't necessarily have an, a laptop but they have a phone you know um, and we're talking about decolonizing pathways to business success right helping you stay in the game uh, launched the blaze virtual summit which man has gotten two webby award honorary distinctions um, 2023 and 2022 um, delivering world-class knowledge man we won best in business and finance in 2022 <clears throat> Uh, won best in metaverse, immersive and virtual in 2023. Um, just dope stuff, right? Uh, the 2023 award was because we were teaching about AI. We were teaching about low code, no code solutions, right? We were teaching about um, just 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 leveraging technology to scale businesses cheaper, faster, right, and with less human capital. <clears throat> And then we launched a bot, y'all. We launched our own bot. With shout, big shout out to Bianca Blaze. Big shout out to Bianca Blaze, the AI business advisor, a black woman entrepreneur. She lives inside of the Blaze Group app, right? And we are scaling that technology to make sure that at 3 a.m., when a black woman has a question, right, or she's feeling defeated and she needs affirmation, um, or she's had an aha moment and she wants to ask about certain trends in her industry, Right, and she can go inside of our app and get real time help for what she needs. She don't have to step through a whole course, right? What you need when you need it at your fingertips, right? And so, um, that's where we're sitting. That's where we're sitting, and I am committed to help Black women entrepreneurs stay in the game. Period. Starting a business ain't hard. It's not. Staying in the business, staying in the game, sustaining. All right, learn how to hire folk. All right, learn how to raise capital. 
Learn how to be a pillar of your community that, that lasts, man. Liberation, being free from systems that eat away at your soul, that is the goal, right? And, and we're honored to do that work. Um, I'm honored to hold the hands of so many black women entrepreneurs um, who have chosen freedom. You know, it took a lot for me to get here. You know, I lost my mother at one to murder, um, was abused. <laughs> And so uh, fled a, a, a marriage in my 20s um, to start my life completely over. Um, healed, healed in so many beautiful ways on the continent of Africa. And I'm honored, I'm honored, I'm honored, I'm honored to be standing 10 toes down and, and securing black liberation for my people. So I love y'all, keep it locked. Y'all hear my voice often. Thank you for rocking with us. Peace. Thank you so much for tuning in to Blaze Group Radio. Remember, you have not yet met all of the people in your life who are going to love you, so keep going. Download the Blaze Group app for day-to-day support on your entrepreneurial journey. Until next time.